I'm doing a quick lesson tonight for Algebra 1104. It's the eighth pace. I'm actually doing this in September because I have a student who contacted the contacted me via the contact form and uh, said, hey, I need a lesson on how to do pages 23 through 25, which is rationalizing the denominator. So let's talk about that. And I'm going to show you a slightly easier way than the five step, six step method that the pace talks about. All right. Let's take a problem like this. First step is always to separate the top from the bottom. Okay. Then, and they're both still under the radical. Okay. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Then here's the easy step just multiply by whatever the denominator is, okay? The radical of the denominator. That's what we have to get rid of. So if I do <coughs> square root of 15 and do the same thing on both sides, okay? Because remember, I can multiply times anything over itself, and that's 1. Anything divided by itself is 1. So I haven't really changed the value of this. I've just changed its appearance. Now, what is the square root of 15 times the square root of 15? Well, here's the cool thing. You don't actually have to multiply it all out and get 225 and then remember, oh yeah, the square root of 225 is 15. If it's the same thing, square root of 15 times the square root of 15, then the 15 just pops out, okay? So I could even do like the square root of x times the square root of x, and it would, you could say, oh, well, it's the square root of x squared, which is x, right? So the square root of 15 times the square root of 15 is plain old 15 down here. Up here now, let's see what happens. Do we know what the square root of 9 is? Right, it's 3. And then we have square root of 15. We keep that. We can't simplify this way. It's like this is a protected quantity. It's under the radical and we can't do anything with it. But we can simplify out here. So I can divide by 3 and get 1, divide by 3 and get 5. So it'd be the square root of 15 or 5. So that example actually was in the pace. You probably saw it. <clears throat> but they added a couple extra steps. Let's talk about this one. This one looks complicated. All I want you to focus on, first of all, is what is the radical in the denominator because that's what we have to get rid of, okay? We have to rationalize that denominator. Since it's the square root of 3a, I want to do that on the top and the bottom, okay? Now that, putting these two together, means that this is going to just pop out. So down here I'm going to have... 3 times 3a. See the 3a popped out? I keep this 3. Let's see what happens here. I keep the 2, the x squared, and now I have square root of 3a. So the last step is just put those two together and you have 9a down here on the bottom. Looks complicated, doesn't look like it's any easier, but technically we have simplified it because we got rid of the radical, the square root in the denominator. Let's take a problem like this. Now this one has the third root. Okay, that's a little tricky. <clears throat> Remember the third root means what number times itself, times itself, times itself equals the number. So like the third root of eight would be 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So the third root of 8 is 2. The third root of 27, okay, is 3, because 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. All right. Well, here I have square root of 25. If I break this down, I have the third root of 3 on the top, and down here I have the third root of 25. Well, even if I multiply by 25, I'm not going to be able to easily get the third root. But what is the, what is the square root? Is there a number that times itself equals 25? And the answer is yes, 5. So what would be 5 to the third power? Because if I could do the third root of 5 to the third power, then the answer would simply be 5. Well, I already have 5 squared. So if I multiplied times 5, okay, then that would give me 125 down here, which is the same as 
5 to the third power. So I'm multiplying top and bottom by the square root of 5. Uh, the third root, sorry, third root of 5. Because I need to keep the same radical, okay? And then I can multiply the 25 times the 5, get 125, keep the third root, okay? <whistles> Equals. And then here I can multiply these together and get the third root of 15, so that stays the same. But down here, the 25 times 5 is 125. The third root of 125 is da 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 da, and this is why we did it. The 5 pops out, okay? But we cannot change the numerator. We keep that, that doesn't simplify. Okay, it's a little more complicated when it's um, the third root or it even has some problems that are the fourth root. In fact, talking about fourth root, here's one right here that I chose for us to look at. <clears throat> we recognize that 9 is the same as 3 squared, isn't it? Okay? So I could write this as fourth root of 16 over the fourth root of 9. Now, if I multiplied top and bottom by the fourth root of 9, so we're doing the same thing here, let's see what happens. 9 times 9 is 81, okay? And then up here, I have 16 times 9, and let's see... <clears throat> 54, so 144, fourth root, okay? But down here, what happens? 81 is the same thing as 3 to the fourth power. 3 times 3 is 9, another 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 9 is 81. So, I can simplify this. It's kind of like saying the fourth root of 3 to the fourth power, which means the 3 just pops out. Okay? So the hardest part is getting that denominator, and that's what you have to rationalize. Focus on that, and then whatever happens with the top, you just leave that. Um, could we simplify the 144? We have to break it down and see what all the factors are that make it up, and if there's any that are to the fourth power, then yes, you could pop one of those exponent, pop one of those factors out. Um, let's take a quick look at this one here. This one's a square root, that's a little easier. And again, I'm gonna just separate the top from the bottom. So 2AB squared, keep that on the top. On the bottom, x squared y. Now, to simplify this, I want to multiply to get the um, to get both of these to have an exponent of 2, because then I can simplify it. All right, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by the square root of y. Ooh, that looks like a 4. Sorry about that. All right, let's see what happens here. When I multiply this times the square root of y, I get the square root of x squared and y squared. And then up here, I'm going to have 2AB squared Y. So we can just push all that together, because it's all the same index of 2. It's not written, so we assume it's 2. 2AB squared Y. But down here, I have the square root of X squared Y squared. Well, the square root of X squared Y squared is just XY. That's just going to pop out, because X times X equals X squared. Y times Y equals Y squared. So we can pop out the xy. Now up here, let's see if anything will pop out. Yes, this is a square root of b squared. So the b will come out front. But now we can we keep these underneath because there's no way to simplify the 2, the a, and this y. Now these two y's are not the same. We can't cancel these, all right? Because this y is, in, is under the radical in the numerator, and this y is all by itself on the bottom. Okay, so, so they're not really like terms. This is a protected quantity when it's under that radical. We have to deal with that differently. Okay, um, I'm kind of jumping in without having seen how the pace builds to this point, and um, maybe I went a little fast and assumed some things that maybe you didn't know. 
hopefully, uh, hopefully this helps a little bit. And uh, as I work back up to this point, um, starting at the beginning of the course and get to this pace, I may find that I need to revise this lesson. But for now, I'm going to post it and see if it helps anybody. All right. Thanks.